Hi, everyone. Everyone doing okay? What a move in EG. Once it took out this 8940 on Sun, well, it was Monday night. Huge move. Stelios is going to have his chance to sell it where he wants to. Forgot where he wanted to do it. Are you there, brother? 92 and 93, somewhere between there, depending on price action. Hey, okay. good morning. Good morning. So uh, that looks very doable. 78.6 is uh, 93.09. So um, we'll see. I mean, this looks impulsive to me so far. You know, uh, what's interesting about Euro Pound is if you can identify an important area, and I'll say my mistake was, you know, I was shorting it against 89.40 and everything got out of the way once it started closing over 50. Um, was not to reverse. So I, I knew coming in to this week, Euro Pound was good or bad over this area. <clears throat> so I guess I could say at least I didn't fight it and that it would have been, you know, pretty huge hit. So you know, I think one of the toughest things to do is uh, to reverse out of a trade that's not working. So like all of you out there, all of us are still um learning no matter how long you've been doing it uh you know it but to you know get your body and your mind to react to something like that um uh, it, it takes a lot of work so you know i'm saying to myself that um next time i have a critical area like that and i'm playing it uh you know i could use a reverse stop i don't know if anyone's ever done that but say you're short one unit and instead of just having a one lot stop uh you could have a two lot stop which is going to flip you from uh, being short to being long i'm gonna uh, promise myself i'm going to do that next time and the way to do that is to write it down reverse at critical areas when you're wrong okay you could write that down that it's okay to reverse in fact it's a pro move to be able to do that so, um, you know, we have ECB tomorrow. Uh, perhaps we're going to get some uh, short covering into it. You know, I the census break, which was something that I called last week on the dollar rally, this decline in euro has been kind of a grinding, uh, almost a little bit of a wedge uh, that we have working here. Oh, and I'm sorry if I didn't say good morning to everyone. Uh, good morning, Alexandra and Sa and G, Ren, Brock, you know, all the regulars here. Look forward to seeing you guys every morning. Arena, how are you? So um, uh, we could have, you know, today's Wednesday, but we had Monday off. You can almost treat it like a, you know, second day of the week trading, like a Tuesday. We had follow through strength. Shalom, Shana Tova, Lachaya, Mamira, um, and the Dixie right here. Uh, you could see on some shorter term time frames that, you know, at new highs up here, it's diverging. You could maybe count this as one. I thought this was going to be one, two, three. So you never know sometimes what you think is going to be a third drive morphs into something else. So now you could say uh, one, two, three, how you doing Sinatra? Uh, really, this is a, you know, I could put into practice this. So I'm short the dollar and what's a key area uh, in the Dixie? I know you guys know. It's that 94 area, isn't it? where it failed from up here, 94 is pretty big. So uh, closes over 94, I think can take you up to 95 and a half or so, which was also uh, a real big area right here was a breakdown at 95 and a half. Here's a moving average coming in at 402. So <clears throat> that's gonna be a big area. Uh, 
today, tomorrow into the ECB. We get through that, we have 95 and a half. If not, I still think there's a chance for some type of pullback from here. Um, you know, 61.8 back is going to be around 92.40, which is around the two week off number. So we'll see what happens in the next couple of days. Uh, yesterday, I was being a cynic about gold. Um, testing support again right here. I said, you know, how many times is it going to do it before it breaks down? Well, it held again. And that's why unless you're trying to get a lead into a breakdown or lead into a breakout, you do nothing. It's still do nothing. Uh, I don't know if I'd wait for a daily candle, but say you get like a two hour close under 1910. Uh, you have a sell signal and if the dollar is going to come off and that's what um, I'm waiting for is if when the dollar comes off and breaks about a point from here, I want to see what gold does. And you know what? You can't fight it if we start breaking out. I'd say getting back above 1950 is going to give it a pretty good chance to attack the top of the triangle. Everyone with me? So we're getting a pop in uh, stock indexes today. Uh, to me, uh, you know, it wasn't the cleanest divergence, but you had one um, a little bit uh, too wild for me to trade, but I could see us rallying from here. Maybe this was enough down here at 33. Um, it looks good to enter where on the long side, just by this pullback, or I know some people I saw on CNBC that bought it yesterday. And something else that could help risk, I mean, this was really a directional move in crude. I mean, you, you broke uh, $7 or more in you know, five trading days. Once we took out this 4240 level, it was pretty much a straight line move and perhaps we get a rally back to 39 to 40 for a sale. So um, I can't press this crude down here, but I'd be looking for some type of retrace move in the coming days or weeks uh, to get short crude. It looks like a top to me. Uh, it looked like a top here when it really wasn't performing with a weak dollar. It wasn't performing with risk. So now if we get a rally with risk and S&Ps, uh, start looking at it at 39. Here's your four hour, so we have a lot of confluence. My uh, best guess would be against this low. This was the only reaction we had, and this low is at 40.21. Um, I don't know, the fires are spreading everywhere. You know, I'm getting warnings. Uh, and actually, uh, it's early in the fire season to be having this. It lasts through October. But yeah, there's a lot of uh, chaos, a lot of warnings coming across our phones and television. And I think today we're supposed to have like 45 mile an hour winds, which could. Uh... Oh, OK. Thank you, Sansi. I think I may have seen the same guy there. I think it was talking about that we're in a, stuck in a range between 35 and 45 for, for a long time. I, I disagree. I, I think we could take out uh, wherever we rally from. Uh, he is very energetic. Okay. Our president would like that. He likes high energy people. So was he the same guy that called the top in Tesla and some of the other uh, high flyers, but I, I do, I watch CNBC and actually I do turn the sound up once in a while. So um, I want to talk about, you know, the pound almost looks just like the oil. What a directional move to the downside. We're looking at it. Um, really hard to get short down here after a big break like this, you know, uh, you would think that we could get some type of rally in the days. I mean, look at this. Let's see where the fibs are now. Okay. 
So at least wait for a 38% retrace if we're bottoming here, maybe back to 31 to 32. But, uh, you know, I can't pull the trigger. Um, if I'm going to be long something against a dollar with EG doing what it's doing, what's it going to be? I mean, your preferred long is euro, right? That's why EG is doing what it's doing. And until EG turns back down, it's going to stay that way. So once EG took out 89.40, <clears throat> your bias switched from uh, uh, euro being your preferred short to being your preferred long and cable being your preferred long to cable being your preferred, well, mine doesn't have to be yours, but uh preferred short that's the way i uh look at eg so you know eg could be very helpful even if you don't trade it to make choices between the european currencies the euro and cable as to what your preferred longs and shorts are uh, canada finally uh, with crude breaking finally went to work it's back above this line okay i mean this was a pretty big trend line a lot of people were watching that it, it took out and now it's back above it uh last week my comment was after the close uh that it was a pretty weak response to crude getting hit right and risk off last week and then this week it came to life not sure what to do with it right here I, i've looked at some of the work uh some of the counts by the team and uh, um, most of them remain uh, negative for that this is a rally to sell in USD CAD. So we'll see. I, I don't see anything that I really want to do here. Uh, yen is really tough. It's, you know, you had this down day yesterday and now it's reversing again. So I don't know, it looks like a rectangle and we're in the middle of it. Okay, Italy will get out after the elections. There are, where, when are there elections, Amira? Anyone know when Italy's, uh, I bet Stell knows. And I've heard that from one of my guests that that's a possibility. So, you know, anything can happen in this environment uh interesting that aussie is acting okay uh compared to european currencies and i think that's about risk on so the s p's are still heading up and gosh i you know i i'll bring blake in because i know uh, he has to do his bias chart and likes to get back into the saddle to trade um by half after the hour so blake sorry i blabbed uh a little bit longer today. Hey, good morning, Coach. Uh, hey, brother. No, no problem. How's it going? Good, man. Okay, pretty good. It cooled off a little bit here. Yeah, even though yeah, we the... it cooled off by a uh, good ten degrees over here, so we're good. Um, yeah. well, not great, but uh, you yeah. Know. Hey, you I want to. Yeah, I want to say um, I'm putting in um, our registration link to oh. the Trader Summit. If you guys have not. Uh, done that make sure you do it uh, make sure you register because this is you know this is a pretty damn cool event that's uh that's coming up so um, make sure you guys register for this get your spot so you don't have to listen to the recording so you can you can be there listen live if you want to um, you know amazing event with amazing speakers uh, apparently I am um, as I found out uh, yesterday I'm going to be interviewing uh, Daniel D. Martino Booth, which uh, at least I, I've got the uh, Dallas connection there since um, since I, uh, I I lived in the Dallas area for 13 years. Um, so anyway, make sure you get registered for that. Now, as far as today goes, yeah, today we're we're seeing a little bit of recovery, a little bit of bounce in the market. It is Wednesday, as you pointed out, Dale, but it might be like a little bit of turnaround Tuesday after yesterday's sell off. Might get a little bit of bounce and risk. One thing that makes me a little nervous about what, what's happening right now is the euro is trading pretty heavy. As you can see, the euro, we're trading below 118. And we're getting, not only are we trading below 118, we're actually getting comfortable below 118. 
So, you know, if you're a Euro bull, you're probably going, wait a second, you know, this is not, uh, you know, we th- these dips below 118 have been bought every time. And every time we get this dip below here, it, you know, bounces. So I, I'm, I'm starting to get a little nervous about the Euro. And I think what we've got to really focus on today is going to be this, these lows right here at 117.10. Uh, I think that 117.10 is that low. Hold on. Let me just, let me just make sure. Well, we're going to write down 117 because it's basically there. Okay. ECB tomorrow, any expectations? Maybe Stell has some. Yeah, I mean, the ECB's, uh, the, you know, the, the the question is, what are they going to be doing with, you know, are they going to expand their balance sheet? To, you know, how are they going to, are they going to match the dovishness of the FOMC? I mean, that's really what it, it boils down to, right? Are they going to, yeah. are they going to, you know, because when, when expectations, well, when, when rates are basically at zero, now the question that moves the market is, how long are you going to be at zero? Because, you know, as far as the, you know, Fed's concerned, we're going to stay low for years. But, um, you know, are we going to be able to get a, you know, are, 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 is, is, the, is the ECB going to be able to match or exceed those expectations? So, Blake, um, if every, yo, everybody has rates at zeros, uh, at zero, then perhaps what's going to start mattering more is who's going to get the highest inflation because nominal rates stuck at zero, it means that real rates are now only based on inflation. So right. that's one point. And another point is perhaps with everybody being stuck at zero for years, then um, real economic data will start mattering once again, since you know there is no other, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, there's uh, no interest to... rate disadvantage or advantage. Yeah. Great point. Yeah, great point. Um, and and yeah, so now is the 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 real question is uh, regarding inflation. Are they going to be able to engineer any? Are they going to be able to lift inflation expectations to a point where we actually start creating some inflation? I think the jury's out. You know what I mean. So anyway, um, what uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna just try to get some of this analysis done really quick. Any bounce in the in the uh, cable back to 130 is probably going to find sellers now. Uh, support is going to be at 128.20. So I know we're kind of in between right now. So I'm going to write 128.20 uh, resistance 130, and I think resistance at 130 is going to be pretty significant. Uh, we are in a range. We're we're not um, we're not bullish the cable anymore and the euro i you know i'm gonna keep us in range while we're out of this um this uh channel so just keep that in mind all right uh let's go over to the aussie so the aussie ha- is bouncing off of this uh the support here um you know we're, we're bouncing off of the this is the previous channel that we we're in and so if you you know forex analytics you know, our analysis last night was, you know, the Aussie may find support at the 71, 75 previous uh, channel support, um, you know, previous channel support, but RSI is pointing lower. So we could see 71 on a break of support. So, you know, as we were coming down there, we, we got down to, you know, 79, 71, 90. And I mean, that's, this is an upsloping trend line. So, you know, that that's why we, you know, stopped short of it. But you can see that that is pretty significant today. So I'm going to say that 72 cents or 71.90, I'm going to get specific, is support. Resistance now, any move back up towards 73 should offer resistance. And let's go over to the key. And we're going to keep that in range as well. Kiwi. Uh, we found support at the 618 retracement and you can see the spike low. So that makes this really important for today. And that comes in at 66 cents. Okay. And uh, let's see, hold on really quick. 
Um, I was just looking at something, sorry. So resistance now, it should be, see that spike right there? And there's another spike right here. So that all comes in around 66, I'm gonna call it 66.75, just to round it in between. And we're gonna stay in range here. The dollar Canadian, now, big move yesterday, obviously out of this, you know, we, we've been talking about the divergent Canadian for a while. And, you know, the last couple of weeks, we finally started to break down and tried to catch up a little bit with the move that we saw in Aussie and Kiwi. But now that the Aussie and Kiwi look like it's peak, dollar Canadian looks like it's, you know, potentially bottom. Now we have the Bank of Canada today, obviously. Um, so now we have to expect any dip down to 71, 131, 131.70 to be supported. And I'm actually going to turn that into bullish because we have broken out. So now resistance is at 32.60. And what I'm expecting here is an eventual move to the 200 day moving average, which is way up here. But you know, obviously we got a lot of resistance up at 133 next in the event that we break out. So uh, with the Bank of Canada today, you know, we might do something like this, right? Or, you know, if we just are both flagging, we might just, you know, just take off to the upside. It's quite possible. So it, it depends on what the Bank of Canada says and, you know, how hawkish or dovish they are. So we'll, uh, we'll see um, how that goes. Okay. Um, Dollar Mexican peso. Dollar Mexican peso is, you know, trading pretty heavy. We really rejected the, all of this resistance. Now you see the arrows are up there because I drew that for Forex analytics people yesterday because, you know, we were looking at this. Right. So, I mean, for for now, I mean, 2195 is obviously really big resistance. And I think we're bearish while we're below it. Now, we are stopping on the support here, which is uh, 21, basically 2150. Okay. Uh, but while we're below that 2195, and I'm going to put an asterisk here because I think that is pretty significant. You know, we have to get above that to, to shift back over to range. Um, yeah. All right. Let's see. Swissy. So Swissy, 92 cents. Obviously, that is um, where we're struggling. That's the spike low here. You know, previous support previous support it's current resistance it all comes in at 92 cents and then 9250 remember is the big you know it's the previous trend line so we have to stay bearish while below it and one of the other things is if stocks do turn lower you know there's a there's a risk that the swiss continues to gain strength so you know, it's hard for me to turn bullish the dollar Swiss just yet, but you know, we're, you know, we, we have some work to do to turn bullish. We have to get above this, you know, 9250 up here. That's 9240. I know, but we got, there's this dotted trend line. It's broken trend line. So anyway, we got to clear all that to really turn bullish here. Um, so we're, we're still bearish while we're below this, um, you know, this area, if you will. Okay. Yeah. While we're below that area, we just kind of you know, stay bearish still. US dollar Norwegian Krona. Now this was a big move yesterday. Big rip higher. We ripped past that 906 level. The, that 906 is now support. 920 is resistance and that's that previous support. So, oh shoot. I'm sorry. I didn't finish the Swissy. Uh, let me go back and finish that. Support is uh, hmm. oh, I'm sure any dip down to ninety fifty 
would be supported. Okay. US dollar Norwegian Krona, uh, what did I say? 9.06 is now support. 9.20 is resistance. I'm gonna put it in a range, but you know, we clear this 9.20 level and, it'll, and we'll have to flip to bullish. Now remember, crude is, you know, it has broken down. Now we are recovering a little bit today. Yes, we are, but it, crude oil is rolling over and, you know, we're bouncing off of horizontal support. You guys should all know that if you're Forex Analytics subscribers, you should all know that that was pretty key. So now any rally back up to here, which is 38.50. Okay. So like if we get a, a move like this, right, then the US dollar Norwegian krona may be very limited on its downside. So, you know, we have this US dollar Norwegian krona, we might only pull back to 904, 905, and then, you know, and then bounce. So anyway, you gotta be careful with that US dollar Norwegian krona, it still has the risk of squeezing. Uh, US dollar Japanese yen, as you guys know, I'm not a huge fan of the yen and what it's currently doing right now. Uh, 106, 106.50 is still resistance, a little bit of a trend line there. I know the top, the, the upper end of its range is right here, but. Hold on really quick guys. Excuse me one second. Dang it. Uh, hold on, almost there. Okay, so anyway, um, well, we're getting a little bit of a bounce here in the, hold on. Okay, so, we're gonna get we we're getting a little bit of a bounce in the cable. Um, one hundred six fifty is still resistance. And support is gonna be, you know, obviously down here at one hundred five ten. Hold on, really quick. talking to the guys in the chat room, all the Forex Analytics subscribers there. Um, okay. So let's go to the dollar index. Here's your dollar index stalling ahead of 94. Now 94, and remember this is all previous support over here. That all comes in at 93.50 or 93.70 but I'm really more concerned with 94. So 94 level resistance. Okay. Support 93, because uh, this is the previous channel. So dips to that previous channel should offer support. Whoops. And uh, let's take a look. And that's also range where, you know, well, I mean, we, I guess we still have to be bearish while we're below this. We really have to get above 94 to turn, to turn, um, turn the range. Gold. Um, let's go over to gold. And as you guys know, Gold still is above this 1900 level. Let me move this because this is not as important as this. This trend line's still holding, or we're still we're below it. However, uh, 
1905 is really still key, okay? Or we just call it 1900, still key. Nineteen forty should, and that's the underside of this trend line that should offer resistance. Nineteen forty-five, okay. And let's go over to the S and P. Oops. Okay, so the S and P. We spiked lower below this support. Got a lot of people short down here. We were oversold, but notice that relative strength was not divergent. Okay. It was actually just, you know, we were just, we saw some selling. So now any rally back up to like this 3,400 is probably going to be, you know, remember this is a big breakout point. So that's probably going to find sellers now. So 3,400 should be resistance. And support now. That spike low is very important. So that's 3290. And we are range bound. All right, guys. So there is your bias chart. It is finished. Um, and there you go. I know it's a, it's a little messier, but that's usually what happens when you get into a uh, possible trend change is you start to see a little bit more messier, um, you know, indicators as far as trends go. And you can see a lot of them have gone, you know, flipped a range. Some of them are, you know, in process of turning from bullish to bearish. So Dale, Steve, Stelios, yeah, good morning. Good hey, morning. Mike. Good morning, everybody. Hey guys, um, I just, I, I need to reiterate, um, if you have not signed up for the Traders Summit event, it's going to be huge. It's going to be enormous. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. We have multitude of great speakers for three days. Uh, check them all out. Make sure you get registered so you get your live spot. Um, what else did I want to mention about the, uh, the, the well, I, I guess I, I need to mention that, you know, register and please do, do us a favor a couple favors. First of all, visit our sponsors that are down here. They are the ones that, um, you know, make this uh, an event that, you know, that, that you can attend for free. So just at least click around, see what they do, see what they offer. And also when you see us on social media, if you see like a tweet from, you know, the Forex Analytics account or myself or Steve or Stelios, you see something regarding the Traders Summit, please do us a favor and retweet it. Or if you see us on, you know, Facebook, you know, you know, share it with, with your friends, you know, please do that because it really helps us out. And, you know, that's a way of us, you know, continuing to market and, you know, getting the word out about the Trader Summit. So, um, and then also uh, Steve Stelios, we have a, a special coming up with Forex Analytics too in the next couple of weeks. So if you guys are, you know, been waiting for, for to, to use for, Forex Analytics, um, you're going to get that opportunity sometime in the very near future to use it at a discounted rate, right? Yes, within the that next few correct. days, actually. All right, very good. The end of so, September uh, is a blockbuster. It is. Yep. And you know what? We're also going to give you guys an opportunity to win some Forex Analytics gear, free, like shirt, cup, mouse pad. AR-15. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We're gonna figure out some sort of <laughs> we're gonna figure out something on how to how to how to give away some some gear. All right, guys. Well, hey, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Um, everybody have a great trading session. I'll see you on the um the uh, the the daily roundup in four hours. And good luck for the Bank of Canada. Thank Thanks, you, Blake. Blake. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, how you doing? Hey Stel, Steve. Hey man. Hey guys. So uh, today seems to be um risk on day you you're gonna expect uh, one you know after three or four uh, days of sell off but um we have to see how that develops and um my view is still that uh, you know we get we get a few buy the dippers around but i think we're going lower um 
And tech is obviously leading the way lower. I think the NASDAQ was what, down 4.5% yesterday. And uh, it was leading on the way up. It's going to be leading on the way down. It, it kind of makes sense. Uh, currencies are, um, you know, they, they're going to follow risk and the dollar. And I do think that the dollar will probably strengthen a bit more, even though I'm a bull in the medium term, sorry, I'm a bear in the dollar in the medium term, I think with risk off, it's going to spike again, probably not as much as last time around in March, but I think we will see. That's why I have closed my, well, most of my Norway longs and uh, most of my silver longs only have one quarter left, although silver and gold are very resilient. I, I must yeah, say I'm yeah. very impressed. We said this yesterday. I'm very, very impressed. I have a quarter on, but I really, really wanted to go to 21. <laughs> but anyway. Um, so I don't I've been, think you'll get that lucky, but. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll knows. reconsider. I'll, I'll look at price action and reconsider. But um, I have been lightening up quite a bit because I, you know, I, I, do expect some kind of correction. You know, this madness can't go on forever. I do think that um, equity indices are going to go a lot, a lot higher in the very long term. But in the in the short term, we should see some kind of correction, um, especially since everybody now knows that we're only ever going up. So um, uh, oil is an interesting one. If you remember the last few uh, days here on the webinar, I was, I was uh, looking at the weekly chart. You know, if you put US oil on, on the weekly chart um, and the same with the WTICO, USD, whatever it's called, um, it's been losing momentum and I was showing this. There you go. You know, it's losing momentum into this zone. I have the exact same zone and I was showing and I said, look, um, this is not good. You know, momentum is stalling plus everything happening globally. You know, we might get another risk off move. I, I said, you know, if you've been long oil and making profits, just take them. That, that's, that's what I think. And I think we're going, probably going to go a little bit lower. Um, how low take your I profits I... and buy two week calls in in Tesla for like Tesla. $5,000 price or something <laughs> like that, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't get me started on Tesla. Um, but I um, mean, people that loved it at $500 post um, split, they must really love it at 300 something, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, What's that, 40% cool. from the high? Uh, yeah, the high was 500, it's like 340 now or whatever, so yeah. It's 30%, still, wow. still, still, it's... Uh, if you ask me, best case scenario, I mean, very best case scenario with all the optimistic assumptions, it's currently trading at 10 times what it should be trading after this pullback. My opinion, post split, fair value, $20. Yeah, <laughs> it's I, I extreme, but yeah. <laughs> I don't think Elon, if Elon, her, Elon Musk, uh, is, if he hears that, Steve, he's not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure he'll he only be a billionaire yeah yeah he's made enough um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, otherwise the main the main news again is the cable and, and the pound in general and uh, you know we, we are not getting any progress although Barnier is supposed to be meeting with the uh, Brits today I think uh, so more discussions and you know the Irish Prime Minister uh, said today, you know, we have to make sure uh, any negotiation, any agreement is fair on both sides. Guys, you're really late. You know, you have to get something done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, um, uh, you know, they're going to be talking some more and they really only have like a month or so to actually agree on something. I, I stand by my view that I think they will agree on something. I don't know what it's going to be, but you know that's how it, I've I've, I've um, compared this to a to a divorce. You know, you, this thing is going to happen, and you're just trying to figure out who gets what and you know how it gets split. And I think they're going to do something. Um, and uh, so take I'll, the, take I'll the dogs, leave the kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to wait for um, Euro pound 92 to 93, probably closer to 93, given the uh, momentum and the, the force that it's moving. Uh, but, um, and, you know, I, I am known for being a little bit early <laughs> on my trade. So, you know, I'm going to probably only on your trade. <laughs> yeah, yeah ask, ask my wife. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm waiting for in the pound. And um Otherwise, there were, there's been no real data out, uh, you know, Swiss unemployment, who cares? 
Mexican CVI, who cares? Really, it's the Bank of Canada today and the ECB tomorrow, which theoretically, theoretically, nothing big has changed, although the, we, we have got uh, a big, not a spike, but a big increase in COVID cases in Europe. So the ECB is definitely going to mention that. Um, and um, let's see what happens more. Actually, I have to run for two minutes. Can you take over, Steve? And I'll be right back, okay? I'll be right uh, back. Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, Steve, uh, you know, I heard some uh, market chatter about the ECB not wanting the euro to be above 118.50 of euros. I don't think like they're going to, I don't think they're going to break protocol and uh, seriously comment about the exchange rate. I, I don't okay. think so. Um, so far, they've kept comments about the exchange rate, even even when it was much higher in, in the past, you know, at a very, very, you know, superficial level. Um, I, I doubt this is going to change, although you never know. I mean, it, it's clearly a race to the bottom for all fiat currencies because, you know, what is more than obvious is that central banks, in essence, have... Uh, an under the table agreement to keep FX volatility rather, rather subdued with, you know, not any huge swings between major currencies as fiat currencies as, you know, having to do with the real value are, you know, plummeting. Um, and I, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Okay. Anything else, uh, Dale, you want us to have a look at? Mm. Gold-silver ratio, uh, what do you think down here? Gold-silver ratio, actually, Do we have a is, correction there? Is, is uh, you know, has stabilized. It has been losing momentum. You can also clearly see it here, um, you know, from the, from the RSI divergence. Yeah. Having said that, you know, that is by... You know, that is for no reason an indication that we're done. Just look at this massive, yeah, massive move, move of right? a decade in compressed, yeah, from 129.3 to 69, roughly. And so far, we haven't managed to really, you know, make any progress to the upside. I mean. You never know. I mean, we might accelerate to the upside and, you know, finally put on a you know, a stronger correction, but in all honesty, I wouldn't want to be fading this move because I find no reason why it can continue towards like 60, 50, even 40. I mean, historically speaking, uh, you know, price is still a rich in, uh, in, in the gold-silver ratio. Of course, the easy money has already been made in this trade and, you know, we kept talking about it, you know, near the high. So, I'm not saying that you can't still make money to the downside. Actually, just by trend trading, you know, you should be looking to sell any rallies if you want to be involved with this. But I mean, pretty sure the, you know, the big, big, easy part of the move has already been uh, complete. I mean, there is no way that we're going to see an equivalent move to the downside. Um, it, it's, it's practically impossible to happen. Um, uh, so I, I think that now the balance is more fairly valued than it was. I mean, at 130 ounces of silver for one ounce of gold, you know, it was a bargain. It, re it really was a bargain. Um, somebody's asking also about gold platinum ratio, which, you know, it's a, it's a good idea to have a look at it. So here's the gold platinum ratio, oppositely from the gold silver ratio. Somebody could actually make, first of all, look at this. We, we've been in a prolonged uptrend, right? I mean, let's not go back to ancient history, but 2008 uh, financial crisis, the ratio was at 0 0.42. We've been in an uptrend since, and we're currently trading at like 2.11. And to be fair, I mean, even this recent move lower doesn't have impulsive characteristics. So I, I'd have to say above... 220, you should be looking for more upside in the gold-silver ratio. So platinum doesn't really look like it's ready to produce an equivalent move like silver did, uh, at least not against uh, gold. Now, platinum against the dollar, 
I have no reason to believe that it can't actually um, also um, benefit from you know very healthy rebounds. Uh, as long as we're trading above like 8.75, I think you know the chances are that we can see that type of a move. The recent pullback can practically end up being, you know, we can't be 100% sure of the formation so far, but looks to me like a pennant, might prove to be a flag, who knows. Anyhow, looks so far looks correct to me, even if you look at the RSI, we went from an overbought reading, we reached almost 80, we diverged, and now we've, in essence, reset the overbought conditions, RSI is consolidating in the middle of the range, um, which tells me that it's very likely that we're going to see another uh, strong move to the upside, breaking through this formation, um, could propel platinum towards 1,040, which is, you know, that previous high that we had in the beginning of the year in January. Um, let me have a look at the rest of your questions. Question if a country has 26 trillion in debt, how does inflation inflate away that debt? Even in, if inflation rises, you still owe 26 trillion in debt. Yes, you still owe 26 trillion in debt, but 26 trillion in debt uh, in 10 years from now, it's not the same 26 trillion they were today, simply because the purchasing power of the same dollars is gonna be much, much lower. For example, just go watch an old movie and see how much Dale actually is the perfect person to tell us. I mean, um, you know, he's oh, in the yeah. seven. How much? Uh, how much? How much well, did the car, Dale? How much did the car uh, cost when you were? Uh, my when first you were in Model your T was four hundred dollars. My Come first on. Model T, Henry. I was working at Ford. How much? How much was it? Assembly line, and Mister Ford gave me a raise so I could buy a car. Oh my God! You, you, you'll forever remain an, uh, a teenager. How much was it? How much uh, did your first car cost? I don't know about twenty-five hundred, three thousand. Yeah, twenty-five hundred dollars, two and a half thousand dollars for a car. That was. It was new, too. Yeah, that was what year, Dale? Uh, let's see, uh, 1970. 1970, you bought a I brand new car for two and a half thousand dollars. Yeah. The equivalent today is something like, what would you say? 2530. 2530 for that, that, that type of a car. Okay. Yeah. Ten so times. Th there is, th there is your answer. Debt that you had in 1970s in today's prices, 50 years later, would be worth one tenth, right? Actually, That's... it was a Chevy Malibu convertible. Nice. And um, in Chicago, when, you know, say around March, when it was still 30, 40 degrees, I'd put the top down, roll up the windows, and blast the heater so I could have the top down. Yep. I huh? know exactly what you mean. All right, man. <laughs> one, one, one of my best friends, uh, Jason's, uh, my son's good father, you know, he, he, he bought with his first money. He always wanted a BMW con uh, convertible. Yeah. Uh, now we're talking about 1999. Uh, yeah. So, you know, he loved it so much that even, you know, through winter, he, he, he even had like um, <laughs> heated seats. So you you know he right. he would you know he would blast the radiator he would also put on the heated seats and unless it was raining you know he would have the top down yeah <laughs> and it was like Michali I mean yeah it's lovely dude but yeah. you know why don't we close the top <laughs> <laughs> he was like I can give you a jacket <laughs> yeah you, know, you could all the chicks could see it when the tops you know. anyway yeah. So that's how um, debt is getting inflated away. Uh, Dale, did you put your Malibu on blocks? <laughs> oh, right, the curve. I wish I had. I wish I had. Yeah. You know, I, I still love the classics. I, I'd love to buy like a GTO or something like that from the 60s. Mustang from there. Anyway, they're still beautiful if they're in good shape. 
you know, and they don't the appreciate except- either. Yes, yeah, and with, they with don't. With the exception of one single car, I was never into antiques. I mean, you know, having to do with cars because technology is important. Uh, you know, I, I, I'd always prefer to have a newer one. There is only one exception. Uh, and then we're going back to charts. Okay. This one. An Integrale Martini edition of 1993. That's the only exception. Was that an Italian car? Yes, yes, Lancia, Lancia and Delta Integral, one of the best race, racing cars, okay. WRC. Yeah. So, um, there's somebody asking about USD card. So, USD card, you know, I want to see what's going to happen. Dollar's today. getting hammered now. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say uh, hammered, but, you know. Let's see if we get any news. Uh, stocks are up. rallying. Dollar has reversed lower. Let's have a look at the euro. Let's have a look at the euro. Euro is higher. And the pound's the, only the down pound, 13 after yeah, being down Yeah, the 90. pound has retraced almost completely the losses of the day. Was it something coming out? Uh, Canadian, I think. Uh, uh, I think there was something. Trying to find it, if there was something coming out. Let me see, Squawk. EU Council President might withdrawal agreement that was concluded and ratified by both sides has to be applied in full. Uh, that was six minutes ago. Hey, Steve. Yeah, mate. Uh, what did e- we have? ECB forecast said to show more confidence in economic outlook. Sending euro okay. higher. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Morning, so it's, it's purely a function of uh, the euro then, which we know has a huge huge influence in uh, uh in what is that bloomberg for. joe yeah that's bloomberg joe actually. oh my god good morning you turn, your we- we'll turn your good webcam morning, on no, and- <laughs> not too early it's too early in the morning. all right buddy he's he, he's probably still still uh half naked or something <laughs> and you know what joe posts great charts on linkedin follow joe on linkedin uh he does a lot of posting there chart of the day and everything so you know, uh, just because Joe isn't real vocal and does a lot of things behind the scenes, you got to follow him. He's got a great eye, technically. That's my extremely you, accurate and humble opinion. Okay. I totally Thank agree, you. Dale. Um, uh, by the way, you know, uh, ECB coming out more hawkish, you know, puts even a lower probability in any chances that the ECB is going to come out and took down the exchange rate. So I'm assuming market participants are, you know, considering that. Now having to do with people that are asking, let's go to the four hour chart, by the way, people that are asking about the bounce in equities. First of all, you know, keep in mind that we are in a market that's been indoctrinated to buy the dip. So even, even if this proved to be the high, which statistically speaking, it's a low probability scenario, especially considering what central banks are doing. But even if that proves to be the high, you understand that there's going to be a lot of resistance from the buy the dippers. So even if this proves to be the high, there's going to be a lot of attempts to buy weakness. Uh, What remains to be seen is how the market is going to react to these attempts. Because, for example, taking this attempt, you know, the only thing they managed to create is a bearish pennant. We talked about that yesterday and then we broke through it. Talking about this rebound attempt, I would be very careful here because as you see, this is the NASDAQ, by the way. The reason I'm giving more focus to the NASDAQ is what we've said multiple times, the NASDAQ and and a very, very limited number of tech stocks have been actually pushing uh, indices higher. So, you know, it's it's worth noting what the NASDAQ is doing because, you know, if the NASDAQ actually fails, then you know the rest of the market is going to follow. So the Nasdaq is back testing, in essence, this horizontal support resistance area, roughly at 11,250. So far, it seems to be stalling here. Uh, definitely the first area of resistance. I would be very careful uh, here. There is no guarantee that the market is just not going to reject this resistance once again and continue lower. Keep in mind that, especially since a lot of the retail crowd jumped. Um, you know, on, on uh, you know, on this bandwagon, there is a lot more pain that this market can deliver, especially considering that fundamentally speaking, you know, 
valuations are completely decoupled from any type of reality. So I'm not um, uh, arguing that sooner rather than later, they're not going to try to jump in and save it. Uh, but that's not necessarily going to happen after like just three, four days of a sell-off. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot more pain in the short term. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Nasdaq trading within the next week, even down to 10,300. Keep in mind that we've broken through this ascending channels um, support. And that's definitely a first burst development. By the way, where is Grega? Grega, I think, promised he's going to jump. I'm today. here. Ah, why don't you say something then? Yeah, I was just charting and completely forgotten an hour actually. <laughs> okay, why don't you have we are you promoted? Let me see. <clears throat> okay, why don't you grab the screen? Go ahead and tell us what you think about this pullback, Gregor. What's the nature of this pullback? Uh, yeah, I know what you're going to say. It's probably corrective, but what type of a correction? Is this the first leg of a correction? Or yeah, something actually, different? you know, I'm not so convinced that this will be proved as a correction. I mean, it's a very aggressive sell-off, as you said it yourself. Is. So um, I'm, for now, I'm just expecting more weakness. Uh, maybe some would label this as a potential wave C drop. Um, but I think that this drop will not be so sharp and so easy to recognize as a completed. I think that there will be some failure moves. Um, so I'm referring to this flat correction that can be unfolding here for upcoming wave B. Uh, so still, I think that this, uh, this swing high here from, from yesterday can be actually retested and then we see a real sell off either into wave C of four or maybe in, into some uh, stronger so in any case, you are in sell the rally mode for the short to medium term. Yes. And as you said yourself, I mean, NASDAQ 100 definitely um, made a very sharp reversal here. More importantly, we have seen a reversal and overlap with this minor correction here. So mm -hmm. if that would be the previous turn from the highs, if that would be kind of some kind of a wave four this overlap should not happen. And since it happened, it means and confirms that we have a top in place. So I'm looking for this trend line maybe to be retested of this Elliott wave channel and then uh, looking for another dip back towards this wave four, uh, wave four support levels. And then let's see what happens down there. So I think that there is still a risk off in the table uh, and I just think that there can be opportunities on the short side from since, since then uh, since Jane was asking about the DAX and you're on the indices do you think do you see something different uh, with the DAX I mean the structure is not exactly the same to be yes, honest the structure is not the same because European markets were much much weaker compared to the US Stocks, yeah, DAX is more, historically, DAX more correlated to the Dow Jones than to anything that's tech. Yeah, exactly. So, but still, even here, if you see uh, from the highs, you have an aggressive sell-off and now it looks like we are rallying here in three waves. So mm -hmm. resistance actually is not far away. Um, definitely looking for a spike above wave A. And then I think that tomorrow when we have the ECB, we will get a lot of answers about this price. Does that mean that your medium term target for the DAX is a lower low than that low? Yes, I would be looking for retest of those September levels. Huh, interesting. Okay, very interesting. Um, the, there is somebody else that's asking, and you know, I, I'm trying here to connect the questions because they do connect. Somebody is asking about Aussie and Kiwi, and obviously we've seen uh, that since risk assets have faltered, uh, you know, Aussie and Kiwi are showing some weakness as well. Do you think that's going to be the beginning of a corrective move there as well, or do you see them actually holding up much better than uh, indices? As you can see here, I mean, definitely it's not easy to fight this kind of an uptrend. It was a mm -hmm. very stable recovery from March, quite nice, impulsive <clears throat> price action here. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> but looks like that we are now stepping into wave four. We could uh, retest lower support. I think that around 0 0.7 is a very nice psychological level and quite attractive 
for now on this to this downside target considering in the risk of sentiment uh, looking for uh, looking at this intraday chart here i think that even here we could be dealing with a flat formation now if i would say that maybe wave c has already finished here well it was quite small compared yeah, to yeah it doesn't a. look very so it compelling doesn't look, yes doesn't look very clear so i think that that's probably the best uh, scenario at the moment irregular irregular b yes exactly and see what yeah. i've learned from you wizard in the last three and a half years yeah a lot <laughs> uh, yeah how's your knee um i'm doing better you know but sport is coming back in six or eight months so i have a lot of time for Re to rehab for recovery well, your work your work doesn't need any rehab you picked it up uh right away after being, you know, kind of out of touch for a few days, Grega. Um, yeah, I cannot be without charts. Even laptop yeah. was in hospital room. Oh, yeah, you're, you're an how many How many strains of coronavirus did you, did you contract in the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> Probably the safest place to be, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's strange that you must not leave the hospital at all or go on a walk. Oh, no. Around the and hospital you can't have night. visitors anymore. It's not a good yeah. time to get sick. You're in there alone yeah, with so, the nurses and medical yeah, uh, staff. I cannot imagine someone to be there yeah. I mean, a month or more or even more. Yeah. So. yeah. All right. Well, I do have an interview, guys. Thanks for uh, jumping in. Dude, here. That's it? Huh? Time flies. Oh, my God. Gregor, yeah. can, you, can you join us like... Yeah, tomorrow. I will join tomorrow or on Friday. Good, because we, we barely had time to touch on like three charts. Okay, yeah. great. All right, yeah, Greg. Cool. Look forward yeah. to seeing you tomorrow. Heal with God's speed. And uh, I'm going to get Crypto Night set up here now. Crypto Night, huh? Yeah. Yeah, He's he has a lance and armor and and everything so i'm looking forward to you know we had that uh, three drive in uh, ethereum anyway uh crypto night uh welcome to face hey thank you so much dale uh pleasure pleasure to be here all right nice oh, to have you uh nice to meet you have you used zoom before yeah i have i have okay okay so you could uh share your screen Sure, sure. That green box. You know, the, it, yeah. you ask people if they use Zoom before, like 99.9% .9 of the people, especially since the pandemic. Post-COVID, post everybody has used all yeah, those programs, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> Zoom, especially, you know. So here you go. All right. So here's Crypto Night uh, looking at Bitcoin. So before we get to the, the charts and the markets, boy, that looks like a nice little pattern there. Um, I'd like to ask you a little bit about your journey. So before you were knighted and you were just a peasant and a serf like the rest of us out there looking to make a few bucks in the market, uh, what were you doing and uh, what led you into the business? All right. uh, thank you for asking. Uh, so basically I am a software QA professional. Uh, back in India. So okay. yeah, I'm, I'm into IT industry. So, you know, uh, being in, in crypto since 2017, you know, used to get a lot of information regarding the tech and how things were going, you know, data mining and, uh, you know, stuff like that back in 2016, 17. Uh, then we had, let's say, you know, we, we had demonetization out here in India, uh, which was a spectacle. So, <laughs> oh, you mean when Modi uh, Modi pulled uh, high denomination cash currency yeah. from the market? Exactly. Uh, what was that like? Uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, especially here in the U.S., although we're we're starting to believe that anything that could happen elsewhere can happen here and even magnified. What was that like for you? When uh, did you know a lot of people uh, keep cash on hand? Uh, was it a loss of wealth for you when they did that? Uh, see, I, I really don't, you know, like to talk uh, about the political stuff, but I, I can. Well, that's economic. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's it, it when in India it's all related. So about the economic, you know, front, okay. on the economic front, uh, let me give you a little perspective of you know how things went here. So the thing is, uh, the infrastructure was not in place at that time. It is it's currently still not in place to pull off such a you know spectacle. Draconian move. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it it was it was not there. It is still not there. Uh, the intentions were fine, but it ended up leading into a big, a massive uh, hole, you know, when it comes to, you know, that there was a huge gap that, you know, was created between the actual uh, workers, the, you know, the working class and the, you know, the bankers or, or the, you know, the, the elite. So it was, you know, the gap increased. And yeah country is still struggling to come out of it I'm not sure when you know that you know can be uh, when the ball starts rolling on the outside it looks you know they, they did a good job and stuff like that it's all PR marketing but in my opinion is it's it was not in a good move many many people uh, lost businesses many people lost you know I mean it, it, it did not you know went well with yeah and then the a year country. later and a year later now you guys are dealing with COVID which only exacerbates uh, that situation, right? Exactly. I mean, India is such a dense and such a diverse place uh, with all the, you know, efforts that can be put in here, uh, still cannot, you know, cannot be, you know, something that can handle such a situation. I mean, I, I, I know the official numbers are somewhere around 4 million people plus. However, uh, you know, I, I personally, according to my sources or resources, I mean, I think it's it's more than 180 million. So mm -hmm. it's 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 pretty bad. It's pretty yeah. bad. Yeah. Okay, so let's go. Let's uh, get back to what uh, most sure. of the world worships, and that's money. And uh, I believe uh, you know, since your focus is crypto, and the experience you had with currency, uh, you know. I'd imagine if I went through that too, I'd be looking for an alternative uh, form of currency. But uh, I see you have four hour charts and RSI showing divergences in, in Bitcoin. Are you a self-taught because of your software background or did you have anyone, any mentors or books that influenced you on how you see technical analysis today? I mean, you you asked you know a pretty uh, I mean a pretty pretty good question here because uh, you know I, I get this quite that's what often. I do yeah. so correct that that's great the thing <laughs> is uh, you know with my background I'm, I'm not from this you know uh, industry so I'm actually self-taught I've um, you know I have practiced I've watched and practiced millions and millions of charts be it one minute to five minute to one day to one week one month yeah. day in day out I have you know so I, I work with like Elliot Waves you know I, I it, my team you know it revolves around confluence you know Elliot Waves pitchforks fibs you know EMA strategies the momentum Everything. the Ichimoku cloud so yeah exactly you know I'm, I'm not you know part of any cult group, cult group. You know, okay. so the thing is, if if two strategies or three strategies say, okay, this is a support, right, or if it's a resistance, right, I, I go with it. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of momentum indicators, and you know, I'm I'm a proponent. Uh, RSI is a big part of my work. I even renamed it to Real Simple Implicator. Don't look up implicator; it's not a real word. Uh, but how did you come to choose? RSI as your momentum indicator over things like MACD and stochastics and uh, others. Uh, was there some type of reliability or just uh, maybe you're like me, uh, you just get comfortable uh, with something and you're a creature of habit? Yeah, so to be honest, uh, you know, RSI is just fine. I mean, it's more of a basic, you know, indicator, but it's, it's good. It does the job for me, uh, as far as my charting is concerned. So it does the job. You, you've got OBVs, you've got, you know, different, different uh, ADX and, you know, ADIs and stuff like that. But this does the job for me because this is not the prime stuff that I, I actually look at. 
but when it comes to in comparison to let's say MEGP or Starch, it's, it's, it's more reactive, I would say. Those are more, you know, lagging. And since I use, you know, fibs and, you know, pitchforks and Elliott waves and stuff like that. So all those things are, all those techniques are more, uh, they, they don't lag or they lag less, so okay. to say. So okay. it complements, you know, com uh, complements well, I would say. Okay, so... so the, you know, TFs are important. I know you're here. You're showing a four-hour chart. Would you describe your trading as uh, day trade, uh, swing trade, uh, position trade? Um, you know, average duration of your trades. Uh, is this your favorite time frame for trading Bitcoin? Four hour. In my opinion, uh, Bitcoin works the best on four hour. Why? The 45 minute. Uh, I never even used a 45 minute. People are using that now, huh? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they are using right now, but uh, but yeah, for 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 let's say day or intraday days, you know, then then 45 makes a little more sense. Uh, okay. But I think four hour is is one of the most accurate uh, you know time frame for Bitcoin because with my experience, I can tell you, uh, I really don't think uh, you know the, the volatility you know when it is there right uh daily and weekly i don't know it, it kind of lags the, the action has already happened so four hour still gives you you know a decent decent uh i mean outlook you, it, it, it works pretty best like for over here so it's just like a normal pitch broke with uh, different, like slightly different settings that i use so if you see here, you know, it's a simple ABC that's in place. So, you know, okay. uh, this is where 12,450s was, you know, my right. initial target. So this is where I closed my longs. Uh, I opened longs again somewhere around 11,400, this area. Uh, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if, it, you know, the, the move up was done or not, right? But, you know, I had this, uh, this place that where I wanted to get into longs. So this was like a more of a B wave. Now it's the C wave that's coming down, like ABC correction. So I would say, you know, uh, on, on four hour, if you see, it's just pretty, pretty plain and simple. You know, it goes down, it bounces. So this is the median line of the pitchfork. And, you know, when it is unable to flip this in then at least like three to four candles, I think that is the decision that, you know, I, I get ready. Uh, I don't even have to look at the RSI or any other indicator. So I, this is the position I, I know that, you know, all these indecision candles and then, you know, this median line is unable to be uh, flipped to support. So I know things are not looking good for Bitcoin. If I go okay. on a one hour chart, it will give you more clarity. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it went down, boom, boom, boom. And, okay. And but, then, uh, here, here we are. All right. So before I get to your expectations on the formation, that looks like a little bit of a falling wedge. I have a question from one of our viewers, and I didn't even know this. Can you still trade Bitcoin from India as the Royal Bank of India have blocked cryptocurrencies? I didn't know that was happening no, they, in they, India. They, no, they haven't blocked. They, they cannot block. No one can they block. haven't it's, blocked. It's, no, it's, it's just not there. We have uh, multiple exchanges that are working. Okay. Uh, yeah, Vizirex is one of the exchange that's integrated with Binance, one of the biggest exchanges. So yeah, that, okay. that's all right. So that's yeah. misinformation, Mahul, that you're saying. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, okay. It's, it's not well taken by the government or let's say by the authorities. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's Until not they like have their own, it. right? Exactly. So they've got yeah. the gold, so they, yeah. they, they need the other assets in place. So yeah. Okay. So, so what are your expectations? So what are your expectations uh, out of this formation here? Uh, you know, just a rally back to one of your median lines, or could this be a significant uh, long yeah, entry see, here? Uh, see, it on 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 a daily or weekly, it looks pretty bad. Uh, yeah. For a long, that's for sure. Uh, on a shorter time frame, it's, it's, it's a combination of your, you know, hidden bearish divergence where your R size is making high highs and, you know, the price is making lower highs. However, if you see from the support, there is no, almost like not a single candle that, other than these two, there is not a single candle that's, you know, being closed underneath or near the support. So it is giving the wicks. 
uh, people are expecting the 9600 gap, 9300 CME gap to be filled. I, I don't think it stops there. If it goes there, it goes to 88 to 92. If it breaks that, then it goes to 7Ks. Uh, but if they want to front run it, now everyone is expecting, and which could happen is that it goes a little lower, okay? And then it starts making a move up towards the median line or any of these lines, and people would start shorting it. Uh, people would short the bounce, but I, I believe if there is a move up, um, then the shorters would be trapped. Uh, you know, the leverage players would be trapped and it goes higher and it goes higher for like about two weeks or so. You know, if it, if it flips this uh, brown line, let's say at 11, 200 ish area, I think it, it goes back to like 12K, 13Ks. You know, okay, so that would so, be new highs for um, yeah. Uh, yeah. this and recovery move. Okay, yeah. that 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 could be that could be a truncated impulse as well, because uh, you know I believe according to this pitchfork, if I just use this pitchfork, you know this this pink line is is not the end. Ideally, it goes to the purple line. Okay, most of the time it does go to the purple line, but I'm a little skeptical because you know I, there is another pitchfork that I, I removed now. I have to look for it. Uh, on the way up, it did not go till the purple line. It just went to the pink line and then it got, you know, got rejected hard. So, you know, on the other end, si the other side, I, I, you know, expect that could be a move. All right. That could be a move because if I go on a weekly chart, so this is the weekly chart. Okay. Uh, so this is one of the weekly charts. So over here as well, if you, if you see, there is still kind of, a, let's say, you know, our size here is making lower lows. The price is still making higher lows. So sooner or later, I, I do expect a bounce. Now it could be a lower high. Okay, it could make a higher high. We'll get no. Okay, but so it could do basically what you're saying here is, it could do anything. I would say it will make a bounce. Now. I have I have marked a couple of days. Uh, one is 11 September. Ironically, that's that's you know 11 September and 23rd is the the weekend. 23rd I believe 21st or 23rd is the Friday. So these two dates are important. Now, if it starts Why? moving up. Why? Is it uh, some type of uh, proprietary cycle work you do? Or why how, Why are uh, these it's, states important? It's, it's uh, the, okay. So basically, you know, according to the FIB timelines, this these two areas make sense. Uh, these, you know, Fridays, you know, if I'm not wrong, I, I'm, I'm right about the 9th September. I'm not sure about it's 21st September, 23rd September. It could be 21st September. But, uh, you know, according to the FIB timelines, this, these dates make, make more sense. Okay, the and FIB timelines. Okay. And, yeah, so what the other, other thing what I think is about, see, there is a lot of tether that's been moved to the exchanges. And the narrative or, or the, 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 let's say, the flavor of this season for crypto has been, you know, made some tether on Tron Network, send it to Bitfinex, you know, swap it for uh, ERC20, uh, you know, tether, send it back to Huobi and pump Ethereum, use the Ethereum's profit to pump BTC. So that's been the, you know, it's been happening for about three, four, five months now. Now the thing is there is a lot of, uh, you know, Tron, uh, or let's say a lot of tether that's been lying around on the exchanges. The amount of BTC that was there, you know, has almost been, you know, drained out in the dump. Uh, but the tether is still out there. Now the chart looks pretty, pretty bearish. You know, if I just move this pitch fork, chart looks pretty bearish. You know, it's just below this uh, your weekly, you know, important uh, resistance level. It's just below this, right? So it looks ugly. It looks like it, you know, wants to get, you know, you know, just just fall back to seven k's, eight k's, six k's. But the ideal situation, in my my opinion, would be to just pump it up trap the late shorters okay and then go to like 12 13 k by these two dates okay and then have a rug pull because then you got elections you know you need some some good news to be happening you know that would affect 
dollar in a positive manner effect, you know, something in a positive manner, but negative for gold, silver and Bitcoin to tank the market in, in late uh, September and in October. And then okay. in November or mid-November, they skyrocket. They start popping again for the, let's say, 17 December to 18 December rally. So 17th, 18th December, they, they kind of top out again, but from November mid to December mid, you know, they have like an exponential uh, 25, 30 days of pretty good run, the, the cryptos and, you know, gold and silver. But hey, uh, if, you if, know, there's a lot of uh, belief that it's kind of a negative corollary investment. But I've noticed, uh, like in March, you know, it's sold off with risk, um, that it's acting more like a risk on risk off asset, rather than, you know, differentiating itself, um, like performing well when pr uh, prices are under pressure. Uh, what's your take on it? Is it just a speculative instrument or does it have any type of hedge diversification value like a lot of Bitcoin proponents say it does? So it's, it's both, to be honest, because the thing is, now it depends upon you. I mean, if, if you are like full on, you know, crypto or, or, or let's say Bitcoin uh, maximalist, then it, it makes sense that, you know, in case, uh, in case, or let's say dollar does do go down, right? Like petrodollar went to zero. So basically when, when the fiat goes down, you'll have, uh, you know, gold and silver sooner or later, you know, skyrocketing and, and cryptos would be a, let's say a medium that will be, you know, kind of, a, you know, medium to use some part of the fiat capital to be moved towards gold, silver, right? Yeah. Uh, the thing is, uh, crypto as like any other asset has, you know, a real problem. And then, you know, the asset is pretty, pretty small, illiquid. And so there are big, big whales. So back in March to, you know, when they had this, this crash from 9K to 3K, so there were big whales that they crashed about 21,000 Bitcoin, you know, market price, they, they crashed it just to scoop up about a few billion dollars worth of Bitcoin to, to just, just, you know, buy it. Now they are, but, you know, they are up by about two or three X, you know, right by now. Uh, but do they have uh, the market to sell off again and, and you know, exit right now? I, I don't think that, you know, the prices are that high. So they need to move the market, you know, higher, much, much higher. So the normies or, or you know, normal people get into crypto and then they sell the top. So in this way, uh, you know, it has, it has long term vision, you know, it is it will act as a hedge for sure because even right now you you won't be able to buy i mean you know people won't be able to buy silver or gold you know it, it, the prices are dumping let's say they were dumping but it was not available silver or gold were, were not available similarly in future they won't be available to buy so they have to move some you know of their fiat money so like in asia they, they moved a lot of their dollars back into tether uh, in anticipation of, of then you've got like two options. You keep it in Tether, so when dollar rises, you sell it back and get back to, you know, from Tether to dollar. Or you have this option to get into BTC, pump it, make like 50, 70% run, whatever your targets are, and then move back to Tether and then back to fiat. So yeah, to your, to your question, it is, it is both ways. It is both ways. It, it is a hedge. Uh, it is kind of at least like three to five years long term, kind of not, not, not looking, you know, very, very long term. It is a hedge, uh, but yes, it is speculative and it's got like a real problem for sure. Okay. From a trading perspective, uh, how do you manage risk? Do you use physical uh, hard stops on it? And uh, what's the execution like uh, if you do use stops? They run them by a ton or what? Uh, have you had so bad fills I, on stop losses if you use them? First of all, do you use them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I do, uh, you know, but... Uh, that doesn't so sound it's, it's, convincing it's to me. Yeah, I mean, see, stops, especially in crypto, you know, it's, it's, it's not a uh, best way to go, to be honest. If you, if you know what you're okay. trading, if you know how you're trading, then, then you won't have to go about it. So, for, for example... Well, I, you like sleep, said, right? What about when you're I, sleeping? Then, then I do, 
then I do, but uh, mostly I don't keep the trades, you know, open at the time, but if I do, then I have stops. For, for okay. example, you no, know, for example, so this is, this is the setup I, I use, all right? So I've got like few 50 EMAs, I've got like 200 MAs, some SMAs, Ichimoku Cloud and stuff like that. So the thing is, uh, on, on multiple time frames, if I see there is, you know, decent amount of uh, resistance right now, okay, I would be fine opening a short and but I would not be fine placing a stop because they might be pick it out. And it happens all the time in crypto, it, it, it's, that's how it is. So if I take a position, there is at least two or three reasons why I'm going long or short or whichever way I'm taking the trade. So the probability of, of it going wrong is, is not that high. And then to be honest, that, that's, that's what I'm personally known for in, in crypto world. Uh, the thing is that I, I really don't take trades, you know, if it's not, you know, suiting my setup and they don't go wrong that much. If they are going wrong, then I made a blunder, then I make a, made a mistake and I cut it. I cut the trade. Okay. So, yeah, if I'm awake and watching, you know, the market, then I don't place uh, stocks okay. at all. All right. So, um, I see you're with the, uh, on your Twitter handle, you had the burb nest. If you'd like to show what you do over there and your business model and how people that have an interest in trading crypto could follow you work with you uh, this would be a good time to show it sure sure i mean uh you know i am uh the board member of uh you know we have this website let me just open this website you're you're a member or are you one of the mentors i see um, they teach I, I am the board member, you know, of, of uh, the Burbness crypto okay. community. So okay. I I teach people. I am the IT head over there, and you know, one of the three board members, including right. Crypto Burb. So yeah, so we, we started this, you know, uh, the the, the Burb Nest, uh, you know, started back in 2017. And what does Burb stand for? Or, it's, it's, Instead it's of bird, you know, it's close to bird, but it's not. <laughs> what's a bird? Yeah. Bird is, is, is like, uh, you know, Bitcoin parrot kind of a thing. So oh, okay. It's, it's, it's a, a, yeah, a name, or let's say, you know. <laughs> okay. I've yeah. learned, to, I, I learned what a bird is today. Okay. All right. So, so uh, you, you teach. Uh, yes. Are you a patient man? I am. So, you have you to know, be I, to teach, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Because I can I can tell you that uh, I've worked for uh, Dell, uh, you know, International Services for about uh, four years, uh, about you know, some some four years, four and a half years or so, and uh, you know, been training there, been been you know, training people on the floors to do training trainers to how to you know go about with the different uh, sectors. So I have, you know, decent experience, you know, when it comes to teaching, teaching. So okay. uh, other than that, uh, you know, we have more than nine to 10,000 people, you know, members in our discord. So, okay. you know, and we have people, you know, from all, all around the world. So we have a team of about 15 people, you know, that again is all around the world. So we are 24 by seven answering questions, you know, making calls, creating content, educational content, you know, all on crypto, forex, you know, stocks, commodities and you know, everything. So, so we are supporting them. So that's, that's what it is. Uh, okay. so this is our website, you know, and, okay. uh, wow. you know, it's a big organization. Yeah. We recently, you know, ventured into a B, B2B sector. So we already have, uh, you know, three to four partnerships that we already, you know, have. So we provide like an on ramp uh, you know, services for, you know, the companies who want to come into crypto, you know, we have developers, we have, you know, marketing team. So right. if somebody wants to get, uh, get the product out, we have, you know, each and everything. So we've got 24 by seven support, you know, consultants and, uh, you know, we, we've got scanner. We, I just, you know, with the team I created, you know, we created the scanner for the cryptos and then as well as- I, I, I see you have uh, PhDs um, oh, is, that teach. Uh, do you know where I received my uh, PhD? Where, where did you, where did you get The started? University of Hard Knocks. You ever oh. hear of the, that college? Uh, not, not really, it sounds like, you know, 
Knox sounds important. Hard, not Fort Knox, the University of Hard Knox, which means where is it? just yeah. where is it? It's all in my head. <laughs> all the all, <laughs> all, all all the mistakes and everything that I've made and seen hundreds of others make. So that was the university where I received my PhD, and really a, a pleasure. A pleasure meeting you. Um, can I ask this, because you're not the first one. What is the reason for um, remaining or being anonymous for you? Uh, first of all, you know, the thing is, uh, we live in a, you know, in, in a world where privacy is, is, is like a luxury these days. And right, it is. You, you might, you know, for example, you know, the, the part of the world where I am, you know, probably crypto or, or stuff like that, you know, related stuff is this not, you know, it does not digest well with the authorities. Right. Uh, tomorrow, see, once you are doxxed, right, so once you are not an anon, right, so you, you have your identity out, it cannot be, you know, reverted or cannot be reversed, but you can stay anon anytime you want. So it is more about security. It's more about yeah. privacy. That's what I thought. And I, yeah, and, and and trust me, it is it is uh, far more important because you know two years down the line, three years down the line, you don't know where we are heading, right? Yeah. So it, you, you, I know. You're, you're, yeah, exactly. So Look, I'm in the U.S., so you know we don't know where we're heading, November third, exactly. if we're even going to have, a, you know. A, <laughs> a peaceful transition of power. So anyway, uh, uncertainty is a certainty now, that's for sure. And I, I'm glad to meet you. I could tell just from talking to you, you're a hardworking technician. And uh, mm -hmm. looks like, you, you know, you have looked at everything, Elliot, uh, pitch, Andrew's pitchforks. Uh, I saw clouds on your chart. So um, I really appreciate your hard work and what you showed us. And um hope that you and your loved ones remain untouched uh, by this virus and that pips just roll into your account from all the hard work you put into with uh, your own trading and people you teach. Thank you so much, uh, Dale. And, and feeling is absolutely mutual. Uh, the, the thoughts are absolutely mutual. Wish you and the company, your loved ones, everyone, you know, safety, uh, security and then you know success uh, so that's, that's yeah, and you can, and you know once more. you once you survive an interview with me you're now my trading warrior brother so uh one thank you I'm very a, much <laughs> sure sure it's, it's it's a pleasure it's it's been a pleasure thank you so much for uh inviting me and uh thank you we'll, we'll do it down the line sure, all right sure. so uh, uh that's going to be a wrap everyone remember don't just count your uh, your crypto, count your blessings, and we'll see you tomorrow. Dollars come off, and uh, this is kind of what I was expecting. Let, I'll see everyone tomorrow for the ECB. Good hunting. You're very welcome. Adios.